Well, okay, hey, we're back. We're back, it's really Ringwood. How are you guys doing? Doing good. We're great. We are, you know, well, we're heading into that, you know, that, that final home stretch toward the election. Do you guys feel like yep. uh, we're getting closer? Yes. Can't wait. So close. Ready to go out and vote. Uh, first of all, did any of y'all do early voting? I did vote by mail. Yeah. Oh, okay. You... Same, I dropped mine off over the weekend. Oh, look at that here. I'm going to be showing up to the polls. So, <laughs> I dropped mine off in a different town. So no, <laughs> oh, well, probably a smart. Actually, same. Probably a smart idea yeah. on both of your parts. Uh, we'll leave that comment be what it is, but good thinking uh, to both of you. Um, so folks listening, are you are you informed? Are you enraged? Are you motivated? Good, because that's kind of what we uh, came here to do. Um, at the very least, remember, November 8th, you're not doing it in, uh, early, if you're not doing it by mail, get on out there. Really, Ringwood, this is about getting the vote out there. And if you do still have your mail-in ballot in your home, please get it in the mail ASAP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want to make sure it gets there. Whatever you're deciding, whether you believe in the stuff that we're talking about, you hate the stuff we're talking about. <laughs> either way. <laughs> either way, you're talking about <laughs> it. Your you're thinking heard. about it. Get your voice heard. That's really what, uh, you know, what being a resident of Ringwood uh, is truly um, all about. Now... Today's episode is actually a, a kind of a weird one because yeah. we actually finished parts of this uh, almost a week or so ago, but we kind of had to change the order of what we were doing here because uh, the the stuff kind of hit the fan. Uh, I think that's probably a pretty yeah, fair statement pretty, to say. Pretty accurate. Uh, I mean, to start, you had that image of for the kids candidate Palmasano in the AR-15 shirt at a school board meeting hit. Mm -hmm. And when somebody posted that, we decided to look into yeah. that. And there was actually something to it that needed to be discussed. And it wasn't being discussed um, from anybody in their campaign. So right. Right. we're and glad. still hasn't been. Still hasn't yeah. been to, the, to this moment where we're re-recording this opening. But again, thank you to all of you who have tuned in to hear about it. Um, it's one of the back episodes. Please, after you're done with this one, go back and take a listen to it. Now, also, there was that crazy, crazy article from Chaos and Control that came out about Ryerson and Ringwood. The closet that wasn't a closet. The closet that wasn't a closet. The Property Brothers would be so ashamed of how that office was framed. So we thought, okay, we absolutely need to talk about that. So we ended up doing that episode. And again, you folks came, you listened, you liked it, you hated it, whatever it was, but you came to listen. And that's exactly why we're here. So today we're going to talk about the Ringwood Borough Council because that deserves some attention as well. Yeah, I mean, so far we focused a lot of our episodes on the Board of Ed. Mm -hmm. And I think it is worth a little bit of attention to talk about um, the Ringwood Borough Council, right? Right. And, and precisely because uh, our Borough Council right now is all the same party. Every all of them? single member. Wow. Yep, every single member. It's all part of the same political party. And that means that, you know, if a single party is in power, then that limits the possibility for any real discussion amongst the council or challenges to any one-sided agenda or one-sided way of thinking yeah, for it, the future of our town. Exactly. I mean, I mean, if you if you are part of that party, then you're probably pretty happy about it. But let's, you know, you know, let's think about some of the things that have been happening in town lately in the last couple of years where during the time where there has been just this one party in the council. Yeah, are they doing the right thing as one party? Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, a lot of us just in conversation, I mean, that we have not just within us here at really Ringwood, but also, you know, friends, neighbors, you know, we talk about it, we question different things, uh, you know, about, you know, what happens in our town. Why is this this way? Why can't this ever change? And the reason kind of becomes pretty clear when you just go right down to, you know, the core of it, which is it's a single party. Everybody is doing the exact same thing. No one is really talking about, you know, going a different uh, direction or thinking about things from a, you know, a different uh, perspective, right? Exactly. Right. 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 So, I mean, like, for example... Taking six years to do something about the lead paint that oh, was found yeah, the lead paint. by the water tower in Ringwood. That shouldn't have taken six years. Shouldn't have taken six years. There should have been better accountability. But when you're a single party and it's, I don't want to say it's my way or the highway because, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to paint us as a town that does nothing because we do. But without that extra level of devil's advocate, asking the hard yeah. questions. Oversight. Over yeah. balance, Holding them accountable. Exactly. Yeah. It's not there. And. I, I, again, this is not the episode to talk about this. Maybe we'll do this in a future episode. But 
the sludge, the Ford sludge. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Just put cap a, it. Put mm -hmm. a cap on that. Just cap it. You know, again, these are the kinds of things that are big issues for us as residents of Ringwood. I mean, whether we're worried about the uh, the environment of our town, the property values of our mm -hmm. town, whatever it is, um, these are things that are important to us. And issues that should be discussed and that the public should know about, Absolutely. not just decisions made behind closed doors. Let's look at the most recent council meeting. Council members need to be held much more accountable to how the business of Ringwood is conducted. We can't have resolutions passed without public input like they did at the last meeting under the cover of darkness. Exactly. A darkness that's now put our state funding at risk yeah, for our schools. Yeah, I mean, the, the, you know, we'll dive into what that was about in a future episode, I believe. Uh, but procedurally speaking, with one side kind of calling the shots on that, it was pretty pretty shady you show up to a meeting or you don't know to show up to a meeting because what they've now brought up was not on the published agenda mm -hmm. that is just really no way to to be a community and no way to uh you know basically to run a council at least right. from our perspective at really ringwood you may disagree with that because you were probably cheering you know the way it happened or maybe you hated what happened no matter what again we're here to bring that up in conversation we just don't think that that's a way that a council should uh, conduct right. itself, right? right? Right. And on the business front in Ringwood, um, I mean, I mean, we all shop at mm -hmm. uh, at Fieldstone, well, whether it's the Stop and Shop or it's the Dollar General or is there anything else there? there yeah. well, <laughs> Not funny. really. I mean, there, there is, you know, and for the and for the business, you know, folks that are in there, thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you for that's absolutely, it. you know, keeping your lights on, keeping your doors open, and giving us. You know, the food we want, the paint we need, the hardware, you know, uh, what, you sushi, know karate, pizza. sushi. Yes, I do. Go. Again, <laughs> we know you all are there and we thank you for that. But from a shopping center perspective, that first thing you see coming over the mountain is, uh, there's no other way to say it. It's an embarrassment. I think it's about eight empty storefronts last time I counted. I could be wrong. Yeah. And I mean, how it's many times have you as the listener asked yourself over the last couple of years, and again, you probably keep asking yourself when you're in that parking lot, why can't somebody do something about this? The litter, the empty stores, like you were mentioning, mm -hmm. the parking lot, that's a pothole breeding ground, you know, all of and the, just the, just the condition of the shopping center. It just looks run down. And that's the first area of business you see if you're coming over Skyline Drive, coming into our beautiful Ringwood, right? I mean, there are ways that you can take care of this. So like what? I mean, well, I mean, again, town ordinances and Sure, yeah. And enforcing them. Right. But if you are a one-sided council and you don't see the problem, then no, and, and you're not listening to the public when they're making comment at your meetings, you may not be prone to do something about that. So that's where, again, I believe government should be stepping up and, you know, and delivering. And when you're a one-party government, that accountability, that questioning, that devil's advocate voice that should exist within your body mm -hmm. is not there. The single party currently holding all seats on the council is Republican. But don't focus on that as a red versus blue thing. That's not what we're doing here. Yeah, I mean, we talked about single party. Uh, it could be all Democrats. It could be all Republicans. It just happens to be all Republicans. Right. And we would be just as annoyed if it was all Democrats doing the same thing. Exactly. You know, when we see years worth of nothing really changing and things happening that shouldn't be happening, that's, you know, whoever's in charge, if it's the entire party, yeah, we as a community are going to look at that and say, wait a minute, what are you doing here? And so in this election, there's just one seat that's up for grabs. And so obviously whoever wins, that's not going to suddenly make, you know, a different side of the majority. But one different perspective can certainly make it so that, you know, you might disagree with something or want to question a decision being made by the council. You've got at least one person there who can call attention to your concerns, especially if they're not what the rest of the council believes. Right. You know, think of it as the old, but the devil's advocate is right. sort of the terminology there. Right. Um, this is sort of that idea of, you know, oh, Playing devil's advocate, we all have that conversation because that's the other side of the story. Right. Which, I mean, oddly enough, is how really Ringwood came about, was to bring you the other side of the story. And many of you have come and listened to that. Think about that in the same grain as what we're trying to convey to you here. We see this as an opportunity for everyone in Ringwood to come together and just ask, why not? 
There wouldn't be any risk to the major party on the council, and to have new ideas and accountability would be great. And you know, these are the things that we think in Ringwood need to see the light of day. These are the right. you know these these are the topics and these are the things. So Ringwood, seriously, why not? Why not the Democrat? Why not a different voice? Why, why not, not a different not, voice? Why exactly. not Eric Gilman? Eric Gilman is a smart, beyond capable guy who's absolutely committed to seeing our town thrive. I mean, now and for years to come. So believe it or not, really, Ringwood, we have got to the end of this episode. And, and again, that one party thing, that one voice thing, that if you don't get the chance to have your opposing voices or thoughts or concerns heard, that's what really Ringwood is about. And that's why we really think that for the council race, think about the other party that isn't there. Think about the Democrat. Think about Eric Gilman. That's really just what we want to do. I mean, because again, that's how we got here. Exactly. And, and that's how you all came to find us. Um, and we're glad that you did. And if you believe in that, well, think about uh, that as, uh, as, as you go out um, and vote. But don't just take our word for it. We, you know, if we're the only thing that you listen to, you're only doing yourself half justice. Let us be part of why you're deciding to do things, but decide for yourself, right? I mean, that's, yeah, that's you know, it, you, you, you can take our word for it, but we'd rather you didn't. We'd rather you think about everything objectively and make your decision accordingly. Get out and vote. Don't forget that's uh, November. November 8th. 8th. And mail those ballots. And mail those ballots if you haven't yet. And thanks for tuning in. We'll see you for the next episode.